Microsoft Train Simulator, or MSTS, was released for PC on May 31st, 2001, to high sales numbers and generally positive reviews. It was developed by Kuju Entertainment and published by Microsoft. It could be regarded as the first simulator that makes use of a driving-focused playstyle operating across rather large routes. Apart from Tycoon games, there weren't really any train games like MSTS at the time. MSTS offered activities for players, allowing them to operate real-life trains on real-life routes. It was quite revolutionary for the time. It beat out another new train simulator to market. You might have heard of it. Trains Railroad Simulator, as it was released on October 17, 2001. Trains, with a Z, focused on model railroaders, offering keyboard and HUD controls, easy-to-use content creation tools like a route builder, consist editor, and eventually rescanning. MSTS, on the other hand, used keyboard controls, with train and route info displayed as part of the HUD. It offered similar tools like a route builder and activity editor, although they weren't nearly as user-friendly. However, MSTS had a jumpstart on the user install base. Over 190,000 copies were sold in the United States alone by the end of 2001, with profits reaching $8.7 million. These numbers increased to 330,000 copies with $11.6 million in profits in the US by August 2006. As a result, plenty of user-generated content would soon become available. Microsoft's Train Simulator and RN's Trains Railroad Simulator would remain as the two main train simulation games for the time being. That is, until Microsoft had some new plans. In May 2003, Microsoft demoed a sequel to MSTS at E3, known simply as Microsoft's Train Simulator 2, also developed by Kuju. Some player reviews of the original MSTS had already begun to sour by this point. Some compared it to Trains, which now had a large user base of its own, with an increasingly large amount of user-generated content. The main complaints were that MSTS's base routes could be quite barren, lacking in scenery, detail, and density. The game's graphics were also proving dated to some, and the content creation process like route building was much slower and archaic compared to Trains' route builder known as Surveyor. MSTS2 sought to address these issues by updating the graphics and lighting, higher poly models, functioning turntables, adding animated passengers, animals, and road vehicles, 3D cab interiors, dynamic weather effects, and more realistic physics and derailments. It was basically an entirely new game. There would be new routes, like Horseshoe Curve in the United States during 1946, and the Deutsche Bahn AG in Germany. Other new additions included a British, Swiss, and Japanese route. There would be a new fleet of locomotives and rolling stock too. Backwards compatibility with the first game would be implemented as well. MSTS2 would focus on not just rail fans, but newcomers too, offering a new easy mode using a simple forward and backwards button. The development team had taken 140 gigabytes worth of digital reference material for the title. Response to this announcement and demo was positive, with players looking forward to a more modernized MSTS experience. It was given a release date of July 2004. By August 2003, development was shifted over from Kuju to Microsoft Game Studios, but then all development was suddenly halted by April of 2004. He's fucking dead! A statement from Microsoft addressed this cancellation. Microsoft Game Studios has cancelled the Windows-based game Train Simulator 2.0. The decision to cancel Train Simulator 2.0 was made some time ago and was based on a long, hard, and difficult look at our business objectives and product offerings. We remain focused on the simulations category with successful platform-driving franchises such as Microsoft Flight Simulator. In short, Microsoft cancelled the sequel due to logistical issues and competing development interests internally. Meanwhile, in 2006, the Kuju development team assembled a new group known as the RailSim team. They announced a product of their own known as Rail Simulator. Rail Simulator would see more realistic graphics, higher poly models, and generally took a few cues from MSTS like keyboard and cab view only controls and the HUD design. The game even included features planned for MSTS's sequel, like animated passengers and vehicles, higher quality graphics, updated lighting, dynamic weather, 3D cab views, and functioning turntables. A demo would be released in late 2007 with the 1950s era British route, Bath to Templecombe, with a drivable Stanier Black 5 steam locomotive. A 
It saw a retail release in Europe on October 12th, 2007, and North America on January 16th, 2008. There were positive reviews, but the main criticisms were lack of tutorials and no anti-aliasing, leading to a jagged graphical appearance. During that time, though, Microsoft had rebooted efforts on MSTS's sequel. On January 19, 2007, Microsoft announced its in-house Aces Game Studio, which worked on Microsoft Flight Simulator, had started development on Train Simulator 2, with it set to release during the holiday season of 2009. Reception was mixed. Some were excited, and others were more skeptical from the first failed attempt at a sequel. The game would be part of the new Games for Windows brand, set to release alongside Windows Vista. The sequel, which I'm just going to refer to as TS2 from here on out, was to be compatible with Windows XP and Vista, and use Microsoft Flight Simulator X as a base for development. TS2 would utilize global world data, basic physics, weather effects, and a medium range graphics system from Flight Sim X, and build upon it to fit TS2's needs. Route builders could use the global railroad data and create routes with tracks already laid out for them to use or modify at will. Backwards compatibility with the original MSTS, as originally planned with the first attempt, would be cut due to the game's engine being far different from its predecessor. MSTS loaded in routes individually, whereas TS2 would now offer the ability to load in an entire world model with routes based on their actual geographic coordinates on the Earth model. This was based upon Flight Sim X's system. This feature was known as World of Rails. You could place a train down in any location in the world, and you'd get a generalized depiction of that region based on 140 different sets of scenery. The individual route list was as follows. Horseshoe Curve in the United States, Stevens Pass in the United States, BLS Lurchsburg Bahn in Switzerland, and Cologne to Dusseldorf in Germany. A variety of diesel and electric locomotives for each route were to be included as well. Microsoft showcased a demo of TS2 at the Games Convention in Leipzig, Germany on August 26, 2007. A press kit of screenshots would be released as well. Over time, more info would be released through blog posts, official websites, and a newsletter. In July 2008, TS2 was demoed at the National Train Show in Anaheim, California, along with a video showcasing more development material and the dev team traveling across the world to photograph, record sound, and research the basis for TS2's locomotives and routes. The team even attended two days of classes in Vancouver, Canada to learn about railroad operations. Things seemed positive as the game's development neared the end of the tunnel. The title was in its final stages of development, still on track for a holiday 2009 release date. This would be the case if it weren't for the Great Recession that had been worsening since its start in 2007. As the recession neared its worst point in early 2009, Microsoft announced it was laying off over 5,000 employees over the next 18 months and closing its Aces Game Studio on January 23rd. Microsoft released this statement. By now, many of you have heard that Microsoft has closed Aces Studio, the publisher of Microsoft Flight Simulator and Microsoft Train Simulator. This was not a reflection of the quality of the products Aces has developed, the sales performance of the games, or the quality of the team at Aces. This difficult decision was made to align Microsoft's resources with our strategic priorities. As a result of this difficult decision, development of the next version of Train Simulator is being postponed for an indefinite period. This indefinite postponement would turn into a permanent one, as development would not continue. It would quietly be cancelled sometime thereafter. Microsoft's Train Simulator 2 would be derailed just short of the finish line. With the onset of this cancellation and a good amount of disappointment, players had a few options to turn to. They could try Train Simulator 2009, Railworks, or stick with the original MSTS. But there was another option. Open Rails was created in late 2009 by a team of rail fans as a free, standalone open source train simulator compatible with MSTS. It uses its own code and offers updated lighting and physics, higher frame rates, and some modified user interface elements. 
While Train Simulator isn't required for open rails to function, it does check for the files as many originate from Train Simulator. Although these days, open rails is basically required if you want to get MSTS working at all on modern hardware, at least in my experience. Maybe there's a workaround, I don't know. With the level of content quality coming out of the community and backwards compatibility with MSTS, open rails could be seen as a sort of MSTS too. People are still creating content from Microsoft's Train Simulator, and OpenRails is still being worked on as of the making of this video. While it is unfortunate that all the hard work on Microsoft's Train Simulator 2 never saw the light of day, not even a public demo, that's just the case with video game development sometimes, especially outside the world of Train Simulator games. It could be said that some elements planned for MSTS2 still carry over into Dovetail Games' Rail Simulator successor, Railworks, later Train Simulator. Many of the keyboard control shortcuts and menus are identical, if not very similar to MSTS. TS2 was cancelled due to its studio being shut down over a bad economy and consequential worker layoffs. It's very unlikely MSTS's sequel will ever see the light of day, let alone a playable demo. MSTS's legacy paved the way for modern train simulators that we have today. The real-life version of the BNSF locomotive on MSTS's game cover in the model in-game, Dash 9 number 4723, was even given an MSTS decal to commemorate its inclusion. In the end, dedicated rail fans still continue to enjoy Microsoft's original train simulator and open rails to this day, 21 years since its initial release.